and Joe Lieberman does not represent me and does not accurately represent most of the people in the state of Connecticut. First, he scolded fellow Democrats for trash talking the commander in chief. Then he told them they'd better get with the president's program. I don't feel that Joe Lieberman represents the kind of Democrat that I am. Maybe we should have seen it coming when the president bestowed a little smooch. To hear President Bush's press secretary say Senator Lieberman is right. We have a few uh, within the Democratic Party, like Senator Lieberman, Lieberman, who understand the stakes that are involved. No one at the White House could stop talking about the object of their affection. The fine U.S. Senator named Joe Lieberman. Senator Lieberman is right. Thank you. Joe Lieberman is way too hand in hand with the Bush administration. You'll recall Joe Lieberman is a Democrat. You're now at a point where the war in Iraq is a war of necessity. It means we have to win it. If he would just say, I'm going to represent the people of Connecticut, and the people of Connecticut want this war to end. Today, Connecticut Democratic Senator Joe Lieberman contradicted many in his own party who say the Bush administration has no Iraq strategy. And Mr. Bush got an assist from across the aisle. We undermine presidential credibility at our nation's peril. That played right into the White House political strategy on Iraq. I talked to some folks in the White House today, and one top White House advisor said, and I quote, I think Senator Lieberman has gained a great deal of respect around here. He's not representing us, and he tends to side himself with the Bush administration. That's how it looks to me. Why do you think he is so willing to alienate members of his own party? President Bush was considering him as a possible replacement for Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld. I don't think that the agenda that Joe ran on 18 years ago is the agenda he's carrying out now. And I don't think that the agenda he has is representing the people who voted for him. My name is Jessica White. I am 25 years old. My name is Donald Harris. I live on uh, Valley Street, New Haven, Connecticut. I'm Will. And Leaf. My name is Marie Watson, and I moved here 11 years ago. Uh, my name is Judy Lundberg, and I live in Southbury, Connecticut. My husband joined the Army Reserves in 1998 um, at a time of peace. My name is Jackie Audemeyer. I'm a teacher. I live here in Newtown, Connecticut. I worked at Winchester for 10 years. We've actually been trying to fight environmental pressures in the Sound for the past several years. You know, we try not to rush things because I think, you know, people just rush into relationships. I did uh, all sorts of jobs. I did uh, do lighting. I did uh, trucking. My husband is in Iraq for the second time now. They talked about was this floating island of liquefied gas. I had spent a total of nine weeks in two hospitals, uninsured, and 10 times worse than I was when I went in. You know, it's not about tolerating who we are. It's about respecting us and giving us the same rights that everybody else has. You know, if I'm reading on the internet a big, you know, firefight that happened or a big, big roadside explosion, I can't help but just break down and cry at work. After 10 years being there, I just feel, feel that I'm, you know, I feel that they just treated us wrong. They're talking about a mile-long man-made island, and it would be right there. There's plenty of days that I never want to get out of bed. It's like every year a major plant goes down in Connecticut. It's just getting out of hand. It seems like nobody cares and nobody's really doing nothing about it, you know? Senator Lieberman needs to drive through the streets of Bridgeport and Hartford and New Haven and realize that a lot of good is not going on there. And rather than sending money and being in favor of sending money over to Iraq, 6,000 miles away, he needs to be spending it here in his own cities and the cities where, that he's supposed to be representing. For a long time, I have followed Joe Lieberman's stance on education. One of the things that's always bothered me has been how much he supports the No Child Left Behind Act. The No Child Left Behind Act is definitely not serving inner city kids. When Lieberman voted for Bush's energy bill, it took Connecticut out of energy decisions that would be made for our state. We no longer have a voice. I have never seen a piece of of anything come my way from Joe Lieberman on, on health care reform or health care uh, initiatives anywhere. Standing up and giving big hugs to President Bush, if nothing else, it just shows how Joe is so willing to turn his back on the Democratic Party. He's not representing me, and, and I'm sure I speak for a lot of people.
So it's certainly time for somebody who is a more accurate representation of the average people. The kind of senator that I would want representing, uh, you know, our state and us as a people is someone that looks at people just as people. I would like a senator who doesn't undermine the National Democratic Party with his views. I want to support a Democrat who isn't afraid to speak out against Bush's ideas and plans. I want a senator who is going to stay true to his or her beliefs. Yeah, there was a moment when I decided to run. That's when uh, Congressman Murtha stood up and he said, stay the course is not a winning strategy in Iraq. It's a terrible distraction on the war on terror. It's hurting our troops. We're weaker for it. We've got to change course. And it was at that point that Senator Lieberman said these critics are undercutting the credibility of the president. And I thought that was so fundamentally wrong. I think it's our job to question. It's our job to challenge uh, the status quo. I said somebody's got to challenge Senator Lieberman. Somebody's got to challenge this policy we've got in Iraq. It's not a winning strategy. But at some point, you say enough. And when the first person I obviously talked to was Annie, and she was right there next to me every step of the way, and I couldn't do it without her. To see my dad running for office, I mean, he's always been into politics. He's always, I've always trusted his opinion on things. And um, he's just, he's clear and he's thoughtful. And, you know, when he's discussing politics with other people, they listen and they tend to agree. And he's the type of person you just want to, like, jump on the bandwagon with. And here I am. Because I go around the state, I hear more about health care. It's elderly who think that Medicare Part D is a confusing mess and a sellout to the pharmaceuticals. 47 million people in this country without health insurance? It's outrageous. First and foremost, we need a federal government that's going to level the playing field, make sure that universal affordable health care is for everybody. It ought to be a basic right going forward. Well, I'm just uh, delighted in uh, teaching this class up at Harding High on how to start your own business. You really see the struggles that a public high school in Bridgeport, Connecticut have to go through. You've got a teacher by herself and there's more security guards in the hallway than there are coaches and drama folks. And what we try to do is let them step away from the standardized test and the counting classes they have and give them an opportunity to dream a little bit about some of the other things they can do. After 9-11, there was a real consensus that we couldn't stay dependent upon foreign oil from the Middle East. Instead, we passed the energy bill. The bill was written by a bunch of lobbyists who got together in Dick Cheney's office. You know, today, we've lost the heart of our good paying manufacturing jobs. We've got to figure out how we're going to compete in the future, how we're going to bring those jobs back. If we can do it, we can do it in a more efficient way, and we can do it because it's right. Now it's time for us to step forward and really force a change in how we do business down in Washington, D.C. Look, I'm running for the U.S. Senate because I think it's time for Democrats to be proud again. Time for us to put forward a bold, visionary strategy of how we get America back on its feet, and that's why I want to be your senator. They tell me, Ned, don't rock the boat. Baby, I say it's high time we rock the boat. I would have led the charge against the nomination of Judge Alito. He fundamentally tilts the Supreme Court in the wrong direction, and it's serious. I say it's high time we rock the boat. We're going to fight for the heart and soul of the Democratic Party. And with your passion, your enthusiasm, the grassroots, the net roots, we're going to show people on a hot day in August that we can win. We can win not by being Republican life, but by being proud Democrats. It's time for us to stand up and elect a senator who will stand up for Connecticut, stand up for our progressive democratic values, and stand up to this Bush administration whose policies are so harmful to our state and to our country. Nobody, nobody will be calling me George Bush's favorite Democrat. I'm Ned Lamont, and I approve this message.